Howdy folks, Mark from Nomad Boat Building. Now today I'm going to process some materials and I thought I would show you how I go about doing some of that. Now whenever I bring in fresh material, it's almost always rough sawn stock. That means both faces are rough sawn and both edges are rough sawn and we need to process those into something that we can work with accurately. So first step, thickness planning, getting it down to at least clean faces if not finished thicknesses. And the second step is jointing those edges, straightening those out if I need them straight. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes the natural curve of a plank is exactly what I want. But a lot of the time I need them straight. So how do I do that? Well, I don't use a jointer. Jointing is the process of creating a square straight edge on your board. Most people use jointers for this. And while that's fine and I do have a jointer, I don't find it's particularly efficient for time and effort. I'm almost always working with long materials, stuff that's like 8 to 16 or even 20 feet long using a jointer is really inefficient. A jointer is only accurate over the length of its bed and really only kind of like half the length of its bed for that matter. So when you've got something that's already a bit wonky and you're trying to flatten it on a jointer, it's going to take a lot of passes before you finally get it down to where it's flat and you may never even get it there if it's really wonky to start with. So what I like to use is a jointing sled. A jointing sled it's really just a plank that's the same length as the stock you want to join, or a little bit longer is even better. And we've got a cleat on the bottom that rides in the track of your table saw. And the edge of the sled is cut off by the blade itself, so that your finished sled is accurate right up to the face of the blade. Now this one's a little bit shy, that's fine. I've got about a sixteenth or so of overhang that I have to accommodate in order to get it to touch that blade. But that's close enough. Now my jointing sled just has a couple pieces of sandpaper stuck down in a couple spots to help create friction between the surface of the plank and the surface of the sled. And right at the front I've got the small cleat with some screws protruding through so the points protrude and the front of my plank just butts up against those. The reason I have the cleat at the front and not the back of the sled is because I can butt the plank up against that cleat and start pushing the plank itself, it's going to push the sled. And that means I only have to control one end of the plank. So in this case, I've got a plank that's pretty wonky here. It's got a big S curve on it. Usually it's the side with the crown that I'll favor to take off because that makes it easier to set up on the sled. So here I just drop it onto the sled. I slide the front end up against the cleat. I make sure I'm overhanging by a little more than a sixteenth, right at that end. And then down at the other end, I'll adjust it so I can feel about the same amount too. And I just let my fingertips tell me how far I need to go. And then it's really just a question of shoving the whole thing through the table saw and making sure this plank doesn't move while you're doing it. If it moves a tiny little bit, that's not the end of the world. The goal here is to get it pretty straight. It's not going to be super, super accurate. And I've got a separate technique of ripping and flipping to help refine any wonkiness that might be in that edge as we go. With the first edge straightened, I'll then measure the minimum width of my plank and set my table saw fence for just a hair less than that. And then I rip the second edge. And once I've ripped this down parallel, I may flip this around and take a light pass again on the first side that I did to help refine that. And then I might flip it around again and do another light pass on this side. And each pass is just going to sweeten it up just a tiny little bit more. By the time I'm done, this is plenty straight for the kind of work that I do. Often with our local red cedar, it's such a stable wood that the edges are usually pretty straight right from the sawmill and I can get away with just going straight to the table saw fence right away and skip the sled. But I'll use the same rip and flip technique to refine that edge to get me down to where I can start cutting to my finished dimensions. Now I realize there's probably some little jigs that you could apply to your table saw fence that would uh, allow it to mimic the action of a jointer. But honestly, it's not worth the fuss of trying to set that stuff up. Just a couple of rips and flips, and I'm usually close enough to where I need to be. I like to keep it simple this way. Even if you plan to use a jointer in your process, I think using this ripping sled to get the first edge down 
much, much closer to a straight line is going to really save you a lot of time. Just going to save you more passes on the jointer. The straighter your board is to start with, the more accurate your results are going to be on the jointer. If you've ever tried pushing a wonky board over a jointer to get it straightened out, it can be very frustrating to get through that first hump of getting the really wonky stuff off. You can see the width of the sled isn't super important. I think the one I have is maybe about eight or nine inches wide, but I can easily drop a 12 inch wide plank on top of that. It really doesn't matter. There's just the one or two screws that grab at the front that are the important part. And as long as the sled is wide enough that it's not tipping off to one side because of too much overhang of your plank, it's gonna work out great. And then I store this sled on some racks overhead close to my table saw so that they're easily accessible. And I also have some other sleds on there that are for use with circular saws, kind of like a Festool track saw. And with those out of the way, I can continue on with my ripping operations. It's all really quite efficient. For the most of the work that I do, if I'm getting a clean line along the length of this, that table saw fence as I push it through, nice and tight, that's as close as I need to be. Of course, every now and then you end up with a plank that's just too long for your sled. And so we have to resort to doing this kind of the old school way. But of course, I usually have a slightly different way of doing these things. So we'll start with just snapping a line on our plank. And then I'll rip to that line either with my circular saw or sometimes, as in this case, I'll just freehand that plank over the table saw, ripping as straight as I can. Now, of course, this is a slightly dodgy operation, but honestly, I really don't think it's any dodgier than using a circular saw. It's a fairly large plank, so the chances that it's gonna go flying are fairly low. And then it's over the planking bench with a nice long jointing plane. And we're gonna do our best to just try and sweeten up that line. Once we've got that edge sweetened up to our satisfaction, it's back over to the table saw where we'll use our same ripping and flipping technique to straighten and square up that edge, which of course is the prime goal of jointing. From there on in, we're ready to rip down to our finished widths. So you might wonder why I even have a jointer if I never use it. Well, I certainly do use it, but I mostly use it for small furniture projects, or here's a good example where I'm using it to flatten off the side of a stem. Great tool for this job. Now I realize this technique doesn't really address any twist in the board. That is something a jointer does really well. You can sort of get twist out of a board to a degree using your thickness planer and a sled in that. Frankly, in the case of wooden boat building, we're more often than not putting twist into a board. So getting twist out is not something I'm worrying about too much. If you needed to get two boards that are perfectly matched for doing a glue up, for instance, there's other techniques that don't involve a jointer you could use for that. We'll address those in a future video. This table saw sled technique is great for getting rid of a wonky weighing edge, getting something that is pretty square and pretty straight. And it's really good if you want to trim an edge down to align with grain, for instance. Either way, it is a shop made jig that I use virtually on every single project and it has saved me a ton of time and it has saved me from owning a jointer for the bulk of my career. Okay, I hope that was useful to you. Now remember these videos are supported by viewers like you through Patreon. So if you could join me over there, I really appreciate that. You can find links in one of these corners and it's always down in the description. All right, folks, catch you next time on Nomad Boat Building.